move on to do your final um, assessment for Animal Farm. I wanted to just give you a little bit of class feedback on the C's paragraphs that you wrote in lesson 15. Uh, oops, she says, right, let me get my little pointer and move along. Okay, so just a reminder of the question then. The question that you answered um, in that lesson, you, the Caesars that you wrote were on, how has Orwell used language to show the violence and or the horror of battle? I'll read that um, extract for you quickly again now. But the most terrifying spectacle of all was Boxer, rearing up on his hind legs and striking out with his great iron-shod hooves like a stallion. His very first blow took a stable lad from Foxwood on the skull and stretched him lifeless into the mud. At the sight, several men dropped their sticks and tried to run. Panic overtook them, and the next moment all the animals together were chasing them round and round the yard. They were gored, kicked, bitten, trampled on. There was not an animal on the farm that did not take vengeance on them after his own fashion. Even the cat suddenly repped off the roof into a cowman's shoulders and sank her claws in his neck, at which he yelled horribly. At a moment when the opening was clear, the man were glad enough to sorry, the men were glad enough to rush out of the yard and make a bolt for the main road. And so within five minutes of the, their invasion, they were ignominious in retreat, by the same way as they had come, with a flock of geese hissing at them and pecking at their calves all the way. That was what you wrote about. Okay, so so many positives. Um, really, really well done. Um, I'll I'll go through and talk about them uh, in a bit more detail. But you know, most of all, um, you are all sorry. Let's let's stay on the positives for a second. Um, the main one being that you're all um, you know you're using the C's structure. So that's really good, and that's what we want by the end of year eight to know that you've really mastered how we want you the structure of how we want you to write the paragraph going forward to year nine later to GCSE. So really well done there. I'll talk about um, little improvements that I'd like you to make um, and then I'll show you a couple of examples. Okay, so points for imp improvement. Some of you are still being a bit sloppy on full stops in capital letters. Not most of you, but some of you are still not checking back through your work. So, you know, that's really, really important. You know, I would expect a year six to use full stops and capital letters. Certainly by the time you get to year nine, there's not really any excuse. And it just sort of creates a, a bad impression of what otherwise might be quite a, a good, well thought out paragraph. So just have that attention to detail at the end. Make sure you are going back and checking your work. When you zoom in on your paragraph, quote around the single word that you are focusing on. For example, um, if you're going to talk about the word calves, and you've already mentioned, you know, the word calves would have been in your longer quote, you would do it like this. The word calves, and you see I've got my quotation mark there, suggests that. So every time I'm using a bit of the text in my writing, I'm, I'm just signalling here that this is not my word, this is me analysing um, the words in the text, in this case by Orwell, okay? Um, and then make links where you, uh, when you can to context. Uh, we always give you a knowledge organiser. So when I say context, we mean, you know, the um, historical kind of environment in which the text was written, relevant contextual information, relevant information from around the text. We will always give you that on that handy sheet. Um, so make sure in year nine and all the way through, you know, I've even done a knowledge organiser for my um, year 12s. But you were looking at that and that where you can, you're just making references to that. I think this one is perhaps easier if we look at a good example, you'll see what I mean. How to keep improving then. So let's read a couple of um, developing paragraph examples. Um, Orwell uses lots of language to show violence and horror. A sentence to show this is, sank her claws into her neck. This shows that she didn't accidentally brush past him, but purposely wanted to hurt him and cause pain. This shows that there are sudden mood changes and that you have to be careful among the animals. This shows that it was a terrifying sight and that it was risky being near the animals. Another way, uh, so okay, sorry, that was my first paragraph. So um, that's quite good actually. That's a, you know, a good developing paragraph. The reason that I've made green uh, this little bit here is uh, that's not actually a quote from the text so um, you don't need to quote any other words the only words that I'd expect to see you quoting again would be if you were zooming um, 
on uh, on one of the words here. So if I was kind of zooming in on claws and saying, you know, the fact they've got claws out might show aggression. Um, but yeah, uh, but they've got the kind of general idea of the crate, haven't they? And then uh, I like we've got, you know, a fairly um, nice uh, inference here, recognising that there's been a change um, of mood, uh, recognising that it would have been terrifying or frightening um, to be near the animals at the time. So yeah, that's a, a kind of developing paragraph working its way um, towards secure. Let's look at this second developing example then. Another way Orwell uses violence is pecking at their calves all the way. This implies that the others are trying to throw them off course and using pain to distract them. The word calves shows they are trying to hurt a body part where they can't move or continue, or if they do, it will be twice as slow. Okay, uh, good. Um, so kind of got um, here we're doing a nice um, zoom so you know we can see we've got our s of our c's we've got our, a bit of evidence here nicely embedded we've got an inference and um, so all we're kind of looking or missing in these two um, paragraphs we're looking for perhaps a bit more inference and um, perhaps um, so you might want to uh, explore um, explore the uh, motive uh, here um, uh, and sort of link it if you could to context. Let's have a look at another one. So we can automatically see this is much longer so that means it's got you know more detail in it. This person has given themselves you know the, more time to talk about a single quote. I sort of often think of it as like imagine a sponge you're really trying to wring every drop of um, analysis out of it um, to make it um, to make it as good as it can be to exhaust um, your quote. Let's have a look. One way Orwell uses language to show the violence of the battle is when he writes and describes how the geese were chasing the farmers triumphantly off the farm. The farmers retreated as a flock of geese hissing after them. Tiela, that's sorry. And as they were running, the geese were pecking at their calves all the way. This creates imagery suggesting embarrassment as well as violence, and this sentence implies that the beasts were disrespecting the farmers and making a fool out of them as they hissed. Brilliant. Okay, so we see we've got several things going here. They're recognising the use of imagery, and they're really exploring the different emotions. So we've got embarrassment as well as violence. Okay, um, and then we get this kind of zoom here. The verb hissed suggests that the geese maybe wanted, sorry, wanted the farmers to feel shameful or embarrassed as it's almost as if they were spitting on the farmers, shaming them for their defeat. Lovely. This is similar to the violent verb pecking. Good. Once again, you see they've used, they've thought, okay, which word am I zooming in on? What can I say about that? Well, violent verb, lovely, pecking. It implies that the geese were teasing the farmers, almost bullying them to get their vengeance and satisfaction. Perhaps Orwell is trying to illustrate that the battle was so successful that the farmers were so embarrassed that the animals grew in confidence. Nice idea. As the animals were still disgusted by the farmers' treatment of them in the past, they continued their violence by pecking to assert their dominance. And then we've got the contextual link here. This links to Russian history as the people who were once ruled so long by the royals now fought in the battle against them and won. Their triumph must have boosted their confidence a lot as they were able to beat the royalist army. So lovely link remembering that Animal Farm is an allegory um, for what happened um, in the history of Russia. So all of the events with the animals are actually kind of representing what happened um, in Russia. Um, so that sort of concludes my point today. The next step is you have, um, you need to read the following slides and then you're going to go ahead and open your final assessment. I'll just talk you through it quickly. So your first step is to read the text, then questions one or two, choose a quotation showing how the animals are feeling and how Squealer is presented and explode them if this helps. So kind of draw your ideas around the quote like we do on class in the board. So spend some real time thinking and then have a go at writing a C's paragraph for your first um, for your first one and then for your second 
on how um, Squealer was presented. Okay, so you're going to do two paragraphs in the first two questions. Okay, uh, then questions three and four are not C's paragraphs. The secret here um, is to think carefully about Squealer, explain your ideas in detail. Um, question four, think carefully what is the book an allegory of. Um, this will make more sense once you've read the extract and read the questions, but do come back to these slides that I'll leave up after this little video um, to help you. Okay, so you now go to the uh, go to the extract, read the extract, do the thinking, and make a start on this for me, please. Okay, well done.